Okay, good morning and good afternoon. Um, am I audible to all of you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, good. So we were almost uh, no, after a long time we are meeting again because we uh, did not have an instructional day on Monday. So we missed two periods. Uh, however, uh, we have uh, another uh, seven, eight lectures uh, wherein we will be able to comfortably complete the requirement of uh, CAT 2 portion. Right, and uh, we were doing in the last period, uh, we started with module 3, where we uh, understood uh, an important force called a friction force. So that is the component of reaction at the contact of two bodies, two rigid bodies. So that component in tangential direction would always expect to uh, uh, resist the expected relative motion between the two bodies which are under contact. So that force is what is called a friction force or Coulomb force by the name of the scientist Coulomb who has done an extensive experimentation on that um, uh, um, friction characteristics of the surfaces in contact. So uh, we were uh, just uh, uh, started with that and understood some theory of uh, dry friction and today we will solve some problem to confirm our understanding. So let me share uh, the screen for today's class. I hope you are able to see the screen here. And, uh, uh, essentially, last class we started with this. So I just uh, have these two slides in this uh, uh, particular file uh, of lecture number 20. Uh, see that uh, uh, how this friction force is defined. You, know, uh, you would have gone through again this video lecture and confirmed. So this graph, what is there appearing is a nice graph to understand or characterize the dry friction. So the friction between the two contact surface here uh, simply called static friction value by the name static friction value when this block is under the equilibrium, static equilibrium. That means uh, there is a force P acting on this block, but the block is not moving. So then this simple component of this resultant of uh, this horizontal uh, friction force and normal is simply uh, this force component is called a friction force. But this friction force cannot uh, uh, be uh, keep increasing as the P is increases and uh, no, um, you will always have uh, the resistance offered because it is depends upon the surface uh, nature, surface characteristics and that is given by mu s coefficient of static friction. That is what we have seen and also it depends upon the normal component or normal at the contact surface, normal reaction at the contact surface. So this maximum value of friction that can be developed, once it is reached, then uh, the state of the block uh, cannot be maintained and it is impend to start its motion. And that point is what is called an impending state. That's what is uh, uh, clear in this diagram. And just after that uh, uh, small increment in the value of P, value of P, would make uh, uh, the um, friction force uh, slight reduction and call that is kinetic friction force and the block is getting its motion getting accelerated in the unbalanced uh, force direction right so that is what is uh, the phenomena of physics behind this uh, uh, system of force acting on the block and so on we have seen and we also have looked at an important definition called what is friction angle uh, what is angle of repose. Uh, let's see in the next slide. So that's what is there. So here we have done this uh, two uh, uh, experimental trials that to define angle of repose. So angle of repose is the one when the block uh, slides on its own due to the weight component. Uh, um, at that time, the maximum static friction force is developed at the contact surface uh, trying to oppose this. And uh, that point is what is uh, corresponding to this angle theta called an angle of repose. And also we looked at uh, if we have this block uh, uh, height uh, drawn is uh, such that it is comparable with the base. So there is no chance of tipping of this block. Whereas if we have the height of the block is more than that of the base dimension. When I tilt this platform, there is a chance that uh, this platform may not slide, but it will uh, rotate and fall down. So then also the static equilibrium is disturbed. So then you define that angle uh, there as angle of tilt. 
corresponding to that. So, if we, uh, there are conditions, so we know that what is the condition for tipping, what is the condition for sliding. So, sliding to occur, the reaction component uh, along the tangent friction force should reach to the maximum static friction value to this, but uh, you should have your x value less than b by 2. That is what you understand here. So, when I have my rigid body, so here it is a block, I neglect the dimension, so the system of forces become concurrent. Whereas here I cannot uh, ignore the geometrical dimension of my uh, block. So in such cases, so you see that uh, normal distribution of uh, you know, the uniformly distributed normal reaction is no more uniformly distributed and that would have um, skewed to the uh, forward uh, leading end of the block uh, where it is expected to slide or tip. So, the normal will not coincide with the weight component uh, along the normal. So, it will be at a distance x. So, you see that uh, this x is not going to be b by 2. So, it is less than b by 2. If this x is coming to the edge, then uh, uh, there is a chance that this will be tipping. But tipping to happen, that condition of x is equal to b by 2 is not only sufficient, also the friction force value should be smaller than that of maximum friction that can be developed. So, this is what is our understanding uh, we left in the last class and today's sir, lecture, yeah. Sir, can you please once again explain the difference between angle of friction and the angle of repose, sir? Okay. See, friction angle is defined as, uh, this. you can look at here. So, what is this angle here is the angle made by the resultant of maximum static friction value and normal. It is resultant to the normal. That is friction angle. Right? That's not necessarily on a block which is on a slope. You can also look at that uh, here. This block is on a horizontal platform. So when I apply P, uh, this starts moving when the friction force reaches to its maximum static friction value. Right? At that time, you see, I have my Fs and the normal, which is equal to W, normal equal to W. So if I combine, you know, finding out the resultant of these two. So when I find the resultant, the resultant R, its inclination to the normal is what is defining friction angle, right? So, here there is no angle of slope, there is no slope. So, if I have a slope and if I keep the block on the slope, there can be two state of the block. Block can stay there itself without sliding, the block can uh, about to start sliding or if you keep the block, it can slide down immediately. So, I have a platform, I keep a block. And uh, I take out my hand, it is sliding down. So that means this angle slope is more than angle of repose. I just keep the block and I take my hand out. And that is the point is about to make this block to slide down. And that point is what is the maximum angle uh, corresponding to, to maintain the static equilibrium of the block kept on the slope. And that angle is what is called angle of repose. So angle of repose would be same as that of friction angle. That's what you have to understand from this diagram. Why? Because see this uh, geometry. This is angle slope and they have a normal here. So normal to the vertical will have the same angle as that of the slope. That's the that, uh, known geometry from school days onwards we are studying. So let me just put it to again that statement I made. I have a slope. This is angle theta and I have normal to this surface. So what do I mean by normal? It is 90 degrees. Then this normal would have to the vertical same angle theta, right? So if I understand this, in this case, uh, you see angle of repose is the point, uh, uh, is this theta r. I have this theta r and I have this normal. So this angle is what is now theta r and this angle is what is theta r. But this theta r happens to be what in this case? Resultant inclination to this because uh, because you see this result in this case uh, uh, is vertical because this weight and this R should balance that. So this is also vertical. So this line is vertical and this angle is same as that of this angle. That's how you can say. Right? Do you understand? So angle of repose is a particular slope, a maximum uh, slope angle. When a block can slide on its own, at that time if you see the uh, on its about to slide on its own, about to slide on its own, that word about to or just to slide on it, that is what you have to see. 
anything greater than this angle of repose make the block accelerating down the slope right that is how you should understand so this angle comes like that so when it is uh, about to start its motion down then this is friction angle coming from uh, maximum static friction value that is what is mu is equal to tan phi here right so so yes. at every instant angle of repose is equal to angle of friction yeah the instant is what is called an impending state of the block about to start its acceleration motion down is that clear okay the block sir. is not sliding if i keep the block on the slope it's sliding then this angle is not an angle of repose then this angle is uh, more than angle of repose so that the block uh, uh, slides on its own weight component right so that would be corresponding to this state in this graph here it's in motion condition but the angle of repose is the limiting maximum angle of slope at that time this block which is kept on this slope is just to start moving down just to start moving down means it's not moving down you are just to start your race means you are not running you hear the whistle then only you can go but uh, till you hear the whistle sound you are as to start your race so that state is what is called an impending state again an equilibrium state all right so at that time whatever the slope angle is what is called an angle of repose and that would be equal to um, friction angle is that clear to you yes sir yeah so let's now uh, solve some couple of problems to make this uh, learn uh, whatever that you have learned to confirm right so i'm going to have two blocks now so this is lecture number 21 and today is the 3103 2021 so i have a slope of angle theta in this slope i have two blocks i have a block one here see this is block a and i have an another block here So this is block B, and these two blocks are tied with the non-extensible uh, cable. So this is inelastic cable is what is connecting A and B, right? So the block A weighs 200 newton, whereas block B weighs. 300 newton right so now uh, see this um, surface is of same surface rough surface but the block bottom surface are different block a is of different material block b is of different material so i have my mu yes of a surface is given by 0.2 mu s yes, for surface b is given by 0.5 so this is more rough surface than this right so you have this so now the question is what is the tension in this cable if these two blocks are about to impend about to move down about to move down means it's they are in impending state right so and what is the tension in this cable that's what is asked so how do you find out so you need to find out this angle theta value is not given and the tension in this cable so that these two blocks are about to impend down so question is determine the angle theta at which motion impend at which motion impend see this letter impend is important at which motion impends that's important and also find also find the tension in the cable will connecting blocks 
A and B. So this is this is a question. So can you solve this problem? So why there is a tension that is there in the cable? Due to difference in surfaces. Due to the difference in surfaces. So due to difference in angle of repose. Now you can say, right? You just have learned what do you mean by angle of repose? I just have explained you again. What do you mean by angle of repose? Uh, you assume that if I do not have uh, this cable, I have only block A separately kept and block B separately kept on this slope. Right? So what would happen to the block A if this is to implant to move down? That would happen when this theta slope is equal to angle of repose. So when it is implant to move down, the angle of repose is what? Is equal to friction angle, right? Is equal to friction angle, maximum static friction angle. So when it is equal to friction angle, I would know what is that angle theta that block A would move on its own down because I have my uh, mu s value given in the problem. So what is my phi s for A? It is tan inverse of 0.2. So tan inverse of 0.2 is equal to 11. Point 31 degrees, right? 11.31 degrees. <clears throat> so, if this angle slope is 11.31 degrees and this is not connected to this block, what would happen? Block A would slide on its own when theta equals 11.31. If theta is less than 11.31, this block A would stay there. So, when theta is 0, block A is there. I gradually increase. When I come to angle 11 degrees, it is uh, about to start moving down. 11.31, it is the maximum angle theta that uh, the static equilibrium is maintained. And slightly more than that, 11.32 or 11.4 degrees, this block would slide on its own if this is not tied with the block B. That's one thing. Since it is tied to the block B and block B has got the mu s value more, look at now phi s for B. That is tan inverse of 0.5. What is the angle that you get? So that's happened to be 26.565 degrees. 26.565 degrees. So when uh, angle is 11.31, if this is not connected, this will slide, but it is connected to this cable. So at 11.32 degrees, there is a tension that is developed in this cable as this is to slide down, but it is prevented by sliding because this block B would slide on its own if this angle 26.565 degrees are given to this slope. Till then, this is going to sit there comfortably in static condition. That's what we have understood, right? So since theta R of block A is less than theta R of block B, there exists a tension that is resulting to tension in the cable, right? So if there is a tension in the cable, tension is what is preventing this block sliding down. It is like uh, supporting the friction here, so it is under equilibrium. And this uh, tension is what is adding to this weight component here. And that is also trying to pull this B down. So what would happen to this? It is non, not on its own. Also, there is an external force that is tension that is pulling this. So what would happen that before the angle of repose of block B, that is 26.565 degrees, the block B would start moving down. And block A would also would be pulling this uh, just it is beyond this angle. So there is an angle between these two theta R A and theta R B and that is the angle uh, uh, together is a maximum angle about which the both the block is important to move down together. And there exists a tension in this cable at that time. So you have to find that angle and the tension. So did you understand the problem description? Anybody? Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, so sir, I you... want to clarify one thing, sir. Yeah. Uh, 
you just mentioned sir if the angle goes to 11.32 for say uh, yeah. b will move down before it like b will Not move down it the start itself yeah a uh, will a, a has to move down if it is not tied with b since it is tied with b b angle of repose is not 11.32 it is 26 degrees 26.565 degrees so if we are angle even though it is more than 11.3 when it is connected like this block a would stay there only because the tension is what is created that prevents this a sliding down on its own so remember again the definition of angle of repose the block has to slide on its own on the slope without any external force other than the weight component the sliding is because of weight component and weight component is uh, uh, um, increases as the angle is increases when that weight component is equal to the maximum friction um, force that can be developed at this contact surface and that is the point the block is to slide down so if you have understood this physical phenomena then it is very clear here this block a would slide at 11.32 degrees if it is not connected to block b but it is connected so this motion is restricted because there is a tension created and um, as i keep increasing this angle theta what would happen the weight component of this as well as the weight component of b would increase and that would uh, make this tension value increases and on particular <laughs> value um, these two units together is about to start sliding so this there will be always tension in this that means what a is pulling this block b on the slope about to pull that's an impending state so the motion impending here it is given that means the impending motion of block b is because of impending motion of block a when it is connected so this is what is pulling force so do you understand so this all yes, sir. when you say it would be clear if you draw the free body diagram so you have to draw the free body diagram of block a separately block b separately and then you get the way to solve this two unknowns theta and t right so let me draw a free body diagram see the way i draw the free body diagram i expect the similar fashion you are also drawing in the examination right please follow a neat free body diagram if you draw you get a partial mark 50% mark you'll get even you make a mistake but if you do not draw a free body diagram properly even your final answer is correct you would get less mark so this is block a so first let me show on this block a its weight component right our weight so this way is how much it is 200 newton this is 200 newton so now i am going to represent here um, uh, this so what is my uh, other one is the tension so when i cut this i will have a tension here so when i cut here i will have tension here and tension here like this this is associated with this and this is associated with this so there is a tension here and then i will also have my normal and the friction force so now what would be the friction force here it is its maximum static friction force what is maximum that's possible is developed so that would be 0.2 times na and what is this it's na right so i can also have a combination of these two com compose these two and put it here so that would be my ra that would be my r a right i can either consider this or i can consider these two right so now uh, let me have here uh, this uh, i have drawn this to define here what is my uh, angle here so this angle is my phi s a so that is 11.32 degrees so the value here let me just so this is my friction force the friction force value here when it reaches the maximum static friction value that is 0.2 na this is na at that time this angle is friction angle right and um, 
this angle is theta only we, we will keep it as theta because it is not angle of repose as there is a tension acting here if tension is not that it's only the weight and its component then this theta is what is theta r but now it's theta only i can't call this an angle of repose but what is there here this angle the direction of r a to the vertical is this right and what is the direction of r a r a to the vertical is by angle theta this angle theta so this is angle theta let me just uh, one minute so this angle is theta so this angle is what is here for this this angle is theta here right yeah so now uh, this is free body diagram of my block a so what is free body diagram of block b so draw that again with the same angle theta which is an unknown and i have here block b and uh, represent my weight weight of the block b which is 300 newton and uh, the tension force which is t and uh, here normal nb and the corresponding friction value maximum static friction value which is 0.5 times nb 0.5 times nb yeah point five times n b So uh, this is your free body diagram. So if I uh, just uh, see this, uh, if this is a point five times n b, uh, but what is happening here? Uh, if this is uh, its maximum friction force, but it is prevented by this tension, and uh, here you have this maximum value of this is obtained uh, with the assistance of tension. That's what you have seen. So in your free body diagram now, uh, you have. Uh, vertical equilibrium equal to zero and horizontal equilibrium equation you apply right so if i combine these two like in this case i have drawn let us combine this and that is rb that is rb this is rb right so now let me apply a condition of equilibrium and get the equation necessary so what is that uh, equation i had Uh, when i apply here sigma fy equal 0 i would have here this angle is theta so what is the angle of uh, this this vertical weight is vertical so that will have to this normal angle theta same angle theta so i would have here 200 cos theta which is minus because it's down so let me take this is my convention positive so this component is cos component down so it is minus 200 cos theta and plus na is what is equal to zero so that gives you what is na is 200 cos theta so now uh, sigma fx equal to zero getting sigma fx equal to zero i would have here uh, 0.2 na Look at this point to N A, and uh, uh, I have this tension plus T. I have this weight component down direction, so minus 200 sine theta. That's equal to zero. So I have here tension would be given by 
This is if I take it on that side, 200 sine theta and uh, minus 0.2 Na, where Na is 200 cos theta into 200 cos theta. So that's my equation one. That's coming from free body diagram of block A. So similarly, you can get free body diagram equation from free body diagram of block B. So what is that from this? You get uh, sigma Fy equals zero when I put same convention you take it. So here I have Nb equals 300 cos theta. And the sigma fx equals zero would give me minus t because it's acting down plus 0.5 into nb. So nb is what is now we have got into 300 cos theta. That's up direction. And weight component is down. So minus 300 sine theta. It's all equal to zero. So from this, I would get my second equation, P equals 300 sine theta right uh, sorry this t goes on that side so this is going to be um, uh, 300 by 2 sorry. let me just rewrite this equation so this equation is going to be t is going on the other side so i'll have 0 0.5 into 300 cos theta minus 300 sine theta is what is my second equation. So now you see I get uh, equation two equations and two unknowns. We can solve them simultaneously and you would get the angle and the tension corresponding tension when both the block uh, motion impacts. So equation one is equal to two. So that gives you 200 sine theta minus 0 0.2 into 200 cos theta equals 150 cos theta minus 300 sin theta. So group them. So it's going to be 500 sin theta equals 150 cos theta plus this is uh, going to be 40 cos theta. 40 cos theta. So it's 190 cos theta. Right? So sine theta by cos theta equals 190 by 500. So that gives theta equals tan inverse of 190 by 500. So what is the answer that you get? It is going to be 190 divided by 500 so the tan inverse 20.81 degrees, 20.81 degrees. So look at this angle. So this angle is in between two important angles. So this is your angle theta, 20.81 20 degrees. Both the block is in front to start. So 20.9 degrees, both are accelerating down, right? 21, 22 degrees, both are accelerating down, but the tension would be there, but the maximum static friction value would be replaced by its kinetic friction value, right? So that is that uh, motion state, but we are not going into the motion state in this problem objective. This problem objective is uh, holding that two block in equilibrium, static equilibrium, and it is uh, uh, impunds to move, right? So that is the condition. So this is theta. So I would get tension substituting this angle in any one of this equation, one or two. So let me take equation two so that I'll get tension T equals 0 0.5 into 300 cos 20.81 degrees minus 300 sine 20.81 degrees. So I have my tension value <coughs> uh, given by 33.66 Newton, 33.66 Newton. So any doubt in this problem? So here, what is that you should understand is uh, the difference between angle of repose and this problem angle. So this is, uh, you should not call this as an angle of repose. 
right? The angle of repose is for an individual block on the slope. But this angle theta is an angle required for the system given in this problem where the motion impacts. So this theta happens to lie between angle of repose of block B less than an angle of repose of block A. So that is what is your understanding before starting the problem required. So the theta has to be between the, so here it is 11.31 degrees and this angle is greater than that but less than 26.565 degrees. And that is what the, you witnessed in this. Any doubt? Uh, yes, sir. I just want to. It's. I think it's a basic doubt again, sir. But uh, yeah. 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 Sir, the angle we just found, 20.81 degrees. Uh, yeah. Does that mean that this angle, the body is just going to start to move, or it has already started accelerating? Like, how does it exactly? It is just about to start its motion. That's what I was telling you repeatedly here. Look at this. Impulse motion impulse. That means it's not moving. It is to start its motion. Both as to just about to slide. So angle greater than 20.81 degrees would slide. So angle 20.9 or 21 degrees, it is sliding. Both are sliding. That's the meaning. Okay, sir. Right? Yeah. Yes, thank you. So what would happen? Maybe I may ask you a question. What would happen if this angle is more than 26.565 degrees? I pose the same question. I push it to you. The same person who asked out. So the body will directly so, fall down. So uh, like the tension will be zero. Tension will be zero. Yeah. zero. Zero. There, there is no need of cable there connecting both of them, right? If this angle is there, block A is there, uh, it would be pulling it, uh, of course, uh, till this 20.81. After that, it is pulling both are under motion, 21 degrees, 22 degrees, like that. When you have this uh, angle 26.565 degrees, what is that, that angle corresponding to the block B could slide on its own without having any tension. So the tension value is zero. So in this, you would see that as you vary this angle theta, uh, you would see the tension increases, then tension decreases, tension becomes zero. So it's a very interesting. If you, you have to vary this angle and look at what's happening to this tension, right? So you got 20.81 degrees. So now you keep increasing this angle, 21, 22, 23 degrees, and see what's happening to the tension. You make a table and then look at uh, and make your observation. That's the homework, right? In this uh, angle theta, you vary this angle theta as an incremental value uh, till 26.56 degrees. What's happening that you see? Hmm? Yeah, so I leave that as a homework uh, to test yourself and uh, make your uh, understanding more clear. And uh, now let's go to a next uh, example problem. Number two. Uh, here I have again a slope. On this slope of angle theta, I have now a block, uh, but it is uh, not a block, we can say that is a cylinder, a drum, I can say. So, which weighs uh, 2000 Newton. So, this is a block. And it is a homogeneous block. And the weight of this block as its centroid, the centroid center point, which is 2000 Newton. Right? So now the question is the dimension of this block is given. This is of uh, uh, this dimension along the slope is along the slope is 0 0.4 meter. 0 0.4 meter, 0 0.4 meter, and the height of this block is given by 0 0.8 meter, 8 meter, right? So this uh, block uh, rests on this incline, 
and the surface is the rough surface uh, given by mu s value 0.55 rough surface so now determine the largest angle theta of the plane before the block changes its state of rest condition so at what angle question is at what angle theta the block or drum changes its state of rest condition that's the question so change of rest condition can happen how can happen either by sliding or by tipping so you have to find uh, now what is the angle uh, at which the state of rest condition changes so this if you are solving i am very happy that you have understood what i have taught in the last period right so can you just answer this question how do you go about solving this problem is the block is going to slide and change its state of rest condition and you would say that is the angle of tilt or is the block is about to tip and changes its uh, uh, tip means it is going to rotate about this uh, end uh, this point uh, about this edge and then uh, it's going to uh, change its rest condition so whichever uh, uh, which is that you are going to answer so question Second. here is what is the largest angle so at what angle when i say you can also make here what is the largest angle that's the largest angle so how do you find so one is if you make an assumption that it is to slide on its own that should be equal to its angle of repose right so let's consider case 1 block in pen to to slide block in pen to slide that means it is that uh, in a static condition so you understand the impending state right yeah. so if that is so what is my free body diagram i can draw the free body diagram or i know my uh, condition there is no external force other than the weight component so i could say that uh, for this the condition is angle of repose theta r and that is equal to tan inverse of mu s right so that's going to be tan inverse of 0.55 what is my angle what is the angle that i get tan inverse of 0.55 that's 28.8 degrees so if this angle is 28.8 degrees this block is sliding but i can't say that is it so is it so if this is the angle of repose for this block that you have put but what would have happened before this is reaching this angle of repose this block can tilt that's what we have to understand because of this rigid body dimensions and so on the height is more than that of base dimension so there is a chance that state of rest condition can be disturbed by a rotation of the block about this edge so that should not happen and uh, i should have this angle of repose then it is correct so i to conclude to conclude that uh, this is going to slide and change its state and this is my largest angle right if it is so i should also have my x equals or less than x should be less than should be less than b by 2 so what is b by 2 here it is 0.4 meter by 2 is 0.2 meter so i should get this x now so if that is so let me draw my free body diagram now here so what is my free body diagram so this is the normal so in this normal i have my normal force component here i have my friction force here so this friction force is now uh, since i consider mu s times n uh i'll see one minute there is some change this is a normal but uh, i know that uh, it's a rigid body 
and it is about to slide on its own the distribution is not uniform the normal uh, uh, resultant of a normal uh, um, forces along the span is not uniform so that would be skewed that is why you get your normal somewhere here this is my normal n at a distance x and i have here my friction force now in this tangential direction right so i would call that as a friction force i will not put that as a maximum static value here right so let me find out now this x value so how do i get this x value now how do i get this x value how do i get this x value should i i should apply condition of equilibrium right uh, so let's take this free body diagram and put my uh, equation sigma fx equal to 0 and sigma fi equal to 0 so sigma fx equal to 0 would solve for my friction force so let me consider the convention upward and to the or upward uh, up the slope and normal directions are positive so here i would have uh, my f see i am not consider here fs right i just put a friction force f and the weight component here that is minus 2000 sin theta that's equal to 0 so i get my f is equal to 2000 sin theta that's equation 1 <coughs> then uh, having sigma fi equal to 0 i have n minus 200 cos theta that's equal to 0 so i have n equals 2000 cos theta that's my second equation now i'm going to take moment about this contact point i do not know f as well as n because i do not know this angle theta so i have this equation let's take now moment about this point now from the known forces known forces what weight components so let me take moment about point o equal to 0 having convention counter clockwise positive so if that is so i would have in my free body diagram this weight is replaced by its two components right one is this another one is this so this is 2000 sin theta this is 2000 cos theta see i draw with the different colors that means in the free body diagram i should have either representation of 2000 newton or i should put their components i should not put both that would lead to a misunderstanding or you are drawing in the examination please draw this components by pencil right so that it is an equivalent representation of weight it is there are no three forces this load is now 2000 newton weight is now replaced by these two forces for convenient to take moment so now what is my uh, moment equation this 2000 sin theta into this height uh, uh, and uh, 2000 cos theta into x so i would get my x value right expression for x value so let's just get now <coughs> that moment equation so that both are uh, one is 2000 cos theta creates counter clockwise moment so 2000 cos theta in 2.4 is positive moment and uh, uh, minus 2000 sorry 2000 sin theta yeah. 2000 cos theta into x equal to 0 so this gives me now x so x value would be uh, 2000 goes off so what is my x value it is uh, goes on this side so 2000 goes out and x will be 0.4 tan theta x will be 0.4 tan theta that's my third equation so now my question comes back here is it so is it so means is the block slide on its own and the risk condition is disturbed if that is to confirm 
what does to happen i should have my x value less than 0.2 meters so i can check that now so let me put this angle 28.8 degrees in equation number 3 so put theta equals 28.8 degrees in equation 3 so x equals 0.4 tan 28.8 degrees so what is that value i get what is that what is the value so 0.21 yeah 0.212 uh, right Where is my cap? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Two one two. Ah, uh, is what is my x? So now, uh, it is very clear that it doesn't satisfy these conditions. Greater, right? So this is my x. So this is uh, uh, not. Uh, this is greater than b by two value. Hence, hence. So uh, see this uh, theta equals uh, 28.8 degrees is the necessary condition for change of its state from rest condition, but that is not sufficient. That cannot uh, be sufficient to conclude. So what does that is required additional equation? This third equation. So value of x. So value of x happens to be greater than b by two. So hence block tips. Before, before slides, before it slides, right? So now that also you have to confirm. So if it is to do that, uh, you should have your um, uh, angle of tilt now estimated. So what would be the angle of tilt? What would be the angle of tilt? How do you get that? right so for tipping case 2 for tipping what is the condition x should be equal to b by 2 but this is not this is not the only this is not sufficient it's necessary equation but not sufficient so you also have to have an additional equation that your f should be less than or equal to mu s times n Why less than or equal? Because equal to mu s n is an impending state. Less than means its friction is uh, static friction value. It does not reach to its maximum friction force there. So as long as this friction force is less than or equal to mu s n value, there is no chance of sliding. But if x happens to be b by two, there is a chance of tipping. So this is the condition. So now if I impose x is equal to b by two, I can get what is my angle theta. So again, take equation three. So put x value there. B by two is what is equal to 0.4 tan theta. What is b by four? B by two. B is 0.4, so it is 0.4 by two equal to 0.4 tan theta. So tan theta equals 0.5. So theta equals tan mass of 0.5 so i get tan inverse of 0.5 going to be 26.56 yeah good 26.565 degrees so look at now this angle is less than angle of repose right so this is angle of tilt now so this is that angle of tilt that block is about to tilt and also i should confirm that my friction force is not reaching to its maximum friction value right then only i can say so this angle it will be tipping but i should see that when this angle has come uh, it is not going to slide that is the evident from this this angle theta is less than theta r which is equal to 28.8 degrees you can conclude that hence tipping occurs before hence tipping occurs before sliding before sliding and the block would change 
from its state of rest condition right so that is the commands that you have to give also you can calculate your friction uh, value if you want you can work out for that friction force value also because you know friction force value from equation uh, one of this this free body diagram what is that this 2000 sin theta so put 2000 sin theta to 2000 uh, into sine of this angle 26.565 565. This is not needed because already you have given a reason here. One can also argue and say with this. So when I put this, I get my friction force value uh, happens to be uh, how much it is coming? Can you just work out? 2000 sine 26.565 and tell me. Eight ninety four point four two. Eight ninety four point four two newton, right? That's my friction force. So what is my F S? That is mu s times n, right? So mu s is point five five. N is what is two thousand cos twenty six point five six five, right? So can you just to find out this? That happens to be 983.87. Yeah, approximately 984 Newton. So that is my FS. So look at now the friction force what is developed in the case two is less than FS. So the friction force is less than FS, which is equal to mu s times n at theta equals 26.56. Five degrees, and x happens to be 0.4 meter. Hence, dipping occurs, right? So that is how you should argue and uh, say. So this problem can be given in the exam, but if I do that, what would be the condition? What parameter? If I change, I can make this problem reversed. Instead of dipping, it is sl sliding first. I could say. What is the data if I Making change? Making the Ah. Sir, if we if we rotate it uh, by 90 degree, the block. OK, that's one thing. But uh, the orientation of the block is same. It is uh, vertical. It is a 0.8 meter high and 0.4 meter width. So what parameter is changing? The rate so you can change the dimension, sir. Dimension. I don't want to change the dimension. Same block. Same block, but I want to have a problem. And if you will answer that, you would say conclusion. The block slides before tipping. So what is the parameter that I should play around? So uh, tipping condition is Fs is less than mu s n. So if we uh, increase Fs, if the question has more Fs than mu s n, then the block won't tip and it will slide. No, no if I increase Fs, uh, how do you expect the block will not tip? We may tip, no, it's a more rough surface. It's more uh, resistant to, to sliding. Right? Yes, sir but, uh, sir, but the condition for tipping is that FS has to be less than mu s n, then only the body will tip. So if we increase okay. FS, okay. So FS is always equal to mu s times n. The friction is less than mu s n is what is the condition for tipping. Yes, sir. And uh, uh, for sliding, what is the condition? F should be equal to mu s n, and the x should be less than b by 2. Right, that's one thing. And uh, uh, when can it slide easily? When you have smaller angle of repose. In turn, when you have smaller friction angle. When will you have smaller friction angle? When the surface is smooth surface, right? So in this problem, what is that you should understand? The surface is rough surface is characterized by mu s is equal to 0.55. If I keep increasing this value 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7 like that, it's more uh, evident that this will not slide, it would only tip. If I keep reducing this value, I give some value say 0 0.2, 0 
and work out for mu s equal to 0.2 for the same problem. You may wonder that uh, what would happen is it will slide. So what is the value of uh, tan inverse of 0.2, 11.31 degrees in the previous problem we have seen. So when I have 11.31 degrees, this block will be sliding because to tipping to occur, what is that angle required? 26.565 degrees. Tipping to occur, you should have x is equal to b by 2. So that is dictated here. So if any angle lesser than this, right? is happens to be your angle of uh, repose. So that's uh, your friction angle and corresponding mu s value that you have uh, would ensure that this uh, uh, drum would uh, slide instead of tipping. So that is what is that uh, understanding. So this friction uh, theory is so interesting theory. You can't just uh, uh, immediately answer. Uh, you, you can answer it immediately so thoroughly you are understanding this principle. Otherwise, sometimes you go wrong. You make some conclusion that may be wrong, right? So if I uh, look at this problem and if I conclude uh, 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 just like that, no partial understanding of angle of repose, I look at uh, immediately uh, friction angle, uh, tan inverse of 0.55. So this is at angle 28.8 degree and the state would change if I answer. You are partially understood. You should check for tipping uh, happens or not. Right. So that is interesting uh, in this case. Yeah. Any doubt? If you do not have any so, doubt, I have done today's task. Horrors. Yeah. If dimensions are given, so we have to keep in mind that x would be less than b by 2. Always, yeah. For sliding to happen. See, if yes. dimensions are given, right? If dimension is given, height is 0.2 and width is 0.4, it is obvious there is no chance of tipping. Though you draw this all, no, you would see that uh, sliding would happen before tipping. You can prove it. If uh, dimension is given, it is a rigid body ideology. So you have three conditions of equilibrium. Those are these equations. And that is not only sufficient. You would require some additional equation like x value is dictated by b by 2 for tipping. Um, or x value is dictated less than b by 2 for sliding. So like that uh, supporting equation is also required along with the condition of equilibrium. Right? Uh, these two problems are interesting. Yes, sir. Yeah. So these two problems I purposely took today's class so that you know what you have learned, uh, the theory of friction in the last period is confirmed. Please go through this problem critically in case some of you are not following and understand uh, you would have similar problems in the examination. So I can make my diagram configuration changes, but the, essentially the idea is draw free body diagram, understand these conditions, apply them sensibly and you would be solving the problem. So with that, uh, let us uh, finish today's class. And uh, since we lost this class on Monday, I would uh, uh, take this Friday's class. So Friday afternoon, one to two. So Saturday is a working day. Saturday is working day. I think so. I think the Saturday is a working day. I don't know which timetable, which day timetable. So we have Monday timetable on Saturday. Monday timetable, sir. Uh, okay, so is that a circular come or it is there in the academic there calendar? There in the calendar. Academic calendar. calendar. Academic calendar itself, okay. So however, uh, let sir, me take that period in case it is there. But uh, Friday afternoon 1 to 2, shall I take? Yes, sir. In yes. Friday. So if you are taking on Friday, then Monday's class will be according no, 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 to no, the no. time table. No, uh, yeah, let it be. Monday's, uh, we get a class, we will have it 1.30 to uh, 3. 1.30 to 3, normally we have it, right, on Monday. If it is working on that day, also I will take, because we, we require more classes, more number of problems can be solved. But I would like to take this Friday, uh, 1 to 2, again, right? Uh, I think you are all free because it's lunch hour, and I would take 45 minutes exactly and stop. Is that fine? Yes, sir. Yeah. So again, we are going to meet on this coming Friday. I would uh, sir, like, so Friday you're taking a class and Monday also you will start at 1 30 sir. As yeah, say. yeah. Monday means uh, suppose Saturday is Monday standable. I will take class 1 30 to 3. See, one period additionally you are having, a, you should feel happy. But your posting of attendance is only for that day, whichever day is available on meetup. I take some additional class. That's all, right? So I will stop uh, recording.